commit yourself to the Lord in prayer this time that the grace to be obedient the honor of the Lord to be obedient the desire of pleasing the Lord that will make you obedient the commitment that are going to be obedient to the word of the Lord pray that God will help you we have come here as overseers, as pastors, as leaders, as ministers, as Christian workers. We have come to get ourselves prepared and ready for the task ahead of us. He's giving us the great commission. And it's looking up to you and looking up to me. That we will be obedient to the command and the commission he has given us. That we'll push every other thing aside. And commit ourselves to this commission has given us pray that God will grant you understanding of what it requires what it demands and you lay everything on the altar willing ready to do his will. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this Congress of this year. Thank you for what we've learned during the retreat that just passed. Thank you, Lord, for the power for the present hour. And we're praying, O oh Lord, that all through the days and weeks and months of this year, we'll find that the path for the present hour is in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking, O oh Lord, that during this year, your perfect will Amen. will be the very center of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Obedience to your word will be our watchword. Amen. We'll not deviate or turn to the right or turn to the left. I will make you the very Lord of our lives and ministry in our local churches and our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, that as you speak to us once again, your word will not be tired of hearing. We will not be dull of hearing. Amen. And the spirit of obedience will grant to everyone in the leadership over here in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We can sit down. We're looking at the Word of God, Matthew chapter 28. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, verse 19, and verse 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. As you look at what Jesus Christ said at his resurrection, now with that resurrection power in the glorious body that he had, and he looked at the world still to be reached, he came to the disciples and first of all he gave them assurance and certainty as to who he was, as to what he possessed, as to the authority and the power that Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, that he had in sending them out. So first of all, he announced to them that all of heaven backs him up. All of earth backs him up. And that there is no power on earth or in heaven or anywhere that can confront or hinder this glorious majestic power the Lord the Father had given unto him. So he said, all power and in fact all authority to you is given unto me, not unto any angel, not unto any created being, 
not unto any human being, not unto any friend, any, any, but all power is given unto Christ, Christ the builder of the church and Christ the Lord of the church and Christ the head of the church all power is given unto me and then he says go ye therefore because power resides in him because power dwells in our master in our king in our Lord he says because of that go and then what are you going to do and teach all nations Literally all communities, literally all tribes, literally all ethnic groups. Teach everyone. What are you teaching them? You are teaching them the gospel. You are bringing to them the glad news. You are bringing to them this word and this message of salvation. And it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And it says, teaching them all things, teaching them to observe all things. It's telling us that you know the danger is there in the world. That there are people that will pick and choose. They'll set this aside. They'll say, This is what we're interested in. That's what I'm interested in. And Jesus knew that. He knew that the days will come when leaders of churches, ministers of churches, and priests in churches, and fathers in churches, and mothers in churches will say, All this is no more important. They'll say, Wait a minute. This 21st century. They'll say, Wait. This modern time and this new time and modern time, how can we still teach this and this and that? But Jesus Christ said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. He says, look at my word, put it down, record it down, and then hand it over to the people that will follow. Everything I've commanded, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I've commanded you and he says on that condition on that basis in faithfulness to that what you are faithful to that what he says lo behold I am with you always even unto the end of the world telling us that we are to keep on evangelizing till the end of the world keep on baptizing in the name of the Father Son Holy Ghost until the end of the world and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded until the end of the world and it says I'm with you you'll experience my presence you'll experience my power as to teach faithfully everything I've commanded and that presence and power of the Lord and provision of the Lord will continue with you till the end of the age Mark chapter 16 I'm reading there from verse 15, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hear the Lord Jesus Christ saying the same thing, but they're saying it another way, so that if you missed an aspect of his commandment, you missed an aspect of his commission on the other side, then on this side you'll be able to get everything he says, Go. That means don't sit down but go. Don't settle down, but go. Have you noticed how denominations settle down? Have you noticed how senior pastors settle down? The higher they go, the cooler they become. And then they just settle, they say, we started this thing, how long now? About five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, it's time to settle. Uh, have you noticed how the people of the world, they come into the church and they're asking us questions. You people, are you going to walk your leaders and your ministers to death? Don't they retire? Don't they sit down? Do they keep on the go on the go every time? They're already 60, they're already 70, they're already getting to 80. When are they going to settle down? Well, we're following the words of Jesus. He said, go ye into all the world. You are still to find in the Bible any of the ministers starting from the time of Moses and Joshua and then Caleb and David. And you are still to find in the Bible from the time of Elijah, the time of Elisha. You are still to find in the Bible and the time of Peter and Paul and the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When they retired, you will not find that. They just went on the go, on the go every time. In fact, we are told about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master and Savior. That while he was talking to the people, behold, he was lifted up. He kept on instructing them and teaching them. And he kept on showing them the way, the way they should go until he was taken to heaven. That's the perfect example for every minister, for every preacher, for every pastor, for every overseer. And he said, go. I was still going. I said, we're still going. 
and he said go into all the world some of all parts of the world will be peaceful some parts of the world will be very dangerous some parts of the world will be kind of unpredictable but he said whatever the condition of any part of the world is unpredictable or painful or persecuting or peaceful whatever go ye into all the world and preach don't go there and trade you can trade if you want to but preach don't just go there because we are going to school you can go to school if you want but preach don't just go there and you mix with the people i want to relocate i want to go to this other place don't just go and relocate preach you know, if we find many people traveling today, it's like almost anywhere you go in the world, you're going to find a Nigerian there. I've never been to any place in this world where there's not a Nigerian. Nigerians are going. They're going. They're going. The only thing is that they're not just going to preach. They're going for a lot of things. And the Lord is saying, the Lord gave the commission. He said, yes, you can go. But when you go, there is one thing to do. And that is to be your watchword. That's to be your heart. That's to be your passion. He said, go ye into all the world and do what? Tell me out loud. Tell me with all your heart. And preach the gospel to every creature. He said every creature. That means every tribe to you. That means everyone to you. Anywhere, everywhere. You preach to everyone. And this is the great commission. And right now you are going to find that the church at large. I pray it will not happen to deeper life. You know, the church at large is like, you know, eh, they're not doing that anymore. They, eh, they go in and they're getting involved with this and getting involved with that and getting involved with that. And the real thing, the central thing and the focus, the very nucleus of the commission or the commandment of the Lord, they have set aside. But the Lord is saying, it is still valid for today. It's still demanded today. And it says, go ye and preach the gospel to every creature. It says in verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be what? Now, uh, you know, sometimes we get worried unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. You know, I'm preaching and then I'm wondering, is he believing? Not worry about that. Just preach. I'm, I'm preaching. Is that person paying attention? Not worry about that. Just preach. I'm preaching. Does that one accept everything I'm saying? Don't worry about whether they accept or not. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not will make me sad. He that believeth not will belittle me. He that believeth not will hurt me. What does it say? What we damned. Therefore, whether they will hear Ezekiel, go tell them. And make my will and my word known to them. Whether they accept or they don't accept, that's between me and them. But the commission and the commandment the Lord has given us is go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be, tell me, damn. And this sign shall follow them that believe. This sign shall follow them that believe. Everybody say, follow. follow. You know, I've been wondering. You know, somebody was asking me a question. He said, uh, you know, Pastor, uh, we don't understand that, you know, you pray and this happens and you pray and that happens and you pray and that happens. We don't understand. I said, what don't you understand there? He said, because we are your children and we are following after you and we try to do everything the way you try to do it and then we pray and nothing happens. Oh, I said, it's very easy. I know why something is not happening when you pray. Oh, he said, you know, he said, yes, I know. I said, where do you pray? Oh, he said, of course, you know, I come to my church. I said, how large is the church? You know, why about, uh, you know, at that time when he was talking to me, there might be about uh, 500 or so, and I preach and preach and preach, and I pray. I said, any blind people there? Oh, he then he looked at me and said, no. I said, in your congregation, any lame person there? Then he said, no. Any deaf and dumb person there? He said, no. I said, you know what I do? I go to the places where the blind are. And there I pray, and blind eyes open. And then I go to the places where the lame people are, and I pray. And the lame people, they rise up and jump up and begin to walk. I go to the places where the problematic people, 
and the people that have challenges in life, where they are, I don't just go, if I only stay here, I, I, I've been wondering, anytime, I, you know, my house is over there, anytime I sit over there, signs never follow me. And sometimes I come outside there, and I sit outside there, and I see you going up, and go see you coming down. Signs never for any time I sit down, I've discovered signs never follow. Any time I sit down, you know, but it's when I'm on the go. Everybody say on the go. On the go. When you go, I was talking to one of our leaders yesterday because I, when I, I was on the go in May of last year, I went to their place. That was my first time in that place. And then I told the people there in Oshakachi, Namibia, and I said, now listen to me, I'm going to mention the name of Jesus, and when I mention that name, something is going to happen. I've never been there, that was my first time. And then I began to pray, and as a child there, that was born paralyzed, hands paralyzed, and legs paralyzed, and then as I began to pray, I mentioned the name of Jesus, and Jesus appeared before that girl and said, get up. And then immediately, that girl never saw Jesus in her life. Many of us say you've never seen Jesus. It's when you go. It's when you move. And then immediately, Jesus said, get up. That girl, hands became all right. Legs became all right. She got up and she began to run. And then as she began to run, one of our overseers, our overseer from Zambia was with me there. Ran after her and grabbed her and brought her to the stage. And I said, Pastor, yesterday when I was talking to him, her, him I said, how is that girl? Oh, the girl is already now born again, up and running and still walking. Everything is all right. And it's a part of the church right now. Yeah. What I'm saying is these signs shall follow. If you don't, if you just sit down there, you know, soaking in the word of God, taking notes and taking notes, you pile up your note like this. And then you're sitting on the rocking chair. And then my note, my Bible, I love the Lord. Signs will never follow. But this new year, signs are going to follow. Yeah. And then the pastor told me yesterday, he said, you know what, there was somebody that came here, he was dead, he was dumb, he was paralyzed. Think about that. Dead, dumb, and paralyzed. And the moment I mentioned the name of Jesus, deafness went away, dumbness went away, paralysis went away. Three miracles in one day. And it is when you go, and that's what the Lord has promised that, as you give yourself to the Lord this year, and you say, I want the presence of the Lord. He says, it is when you go to the place he has sent you, and you do what he has told you to do, these signs shall follow them. They'll follow me. I said they'll follow me. I, I begin to, you know, already I'm writing down the places I'm going to go this January and this February. I'm already compiling them. I'll be going there and going there and going there. See, what do you still want to go? Because I want to see some more signs. And then as you to you, as you mark it and overseer, and then pastor and preachers, if you don't just stay in one location and you are moving here and here and here and there, the power of God will appear to you. The presence of God will go with you. But if you don't stay in that one place, no blind person there, no lame person there, no challenge in that place, and you're just staying in one place, you'll not be able to find the signs. But as father, as children, like children, like father. And then the signs that God has given, I'm going to transfer them to you. And then when you're on the go, you're going to find out the power of the Lord will follow you in Jesus' name. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sea. Tell me the rest. And they shall recover. I'm going to read uh, those verses again. Look at verse, uh, look at verse uh, 17. And this sign shall follow you that believe. Yeah. In his name, you will cast out devils. Yeah. You will speak with new tongues. Yeah. You will take off serpents. Yeah. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Yeah. You. Where are you? I said you. You will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Yeah. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they, tell me the rest, they went forth. We're going forth. This new year, we're going forth. 
every day of this year we're going forth and we're doing something everywhere in jesus name and they went forth and and preach everywhere the lord walking with them that's the presence of god he was with them partnering with them he was with them he was present with them his power was with them and it says walking with them and confirming the word with signs following tell me what follows now yeah. amen we're looking at the word of god today experiencing the presence of god experiencing the presence of god there are three things we're going to talk about number one the privilege of his promised presence he has promised it already and what a great privilege you have that you will be an ex a, a person that will experience that presence the pro the privilege of his promised presence number two our purging in his perceived presence when you perceive the presence of the lord is there with you and then you see him you see his glory you see his majesty and you see his power and you see his love the purging that takes place as a result of that number three now the purpose of his perpetual presence perpetually present i will be with you i am with you always until the end of the world the purpose of his perpetual presence number one the privilege of his promised presence we're looking at exodus chapter 33 exodus chapter 33 and i'm reading there to you from verse 12 here moses wanted the presence of god and the lord promised him that was going to give him that presence for a purpose you need to understand the presence of god is not given anyhow to anyone anywhere there is a purpose for which that presence is given and when you come into the very center of the will of god and you want to see that for purpose fulfilled in your life you are going to find that the promised presence will be a privilege for you exodus chapter 33 i'm reading from verse 12 and moses said unto the lord see thou sayest unto me bring up these people and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me yet thou hast said i know thee by name and thou hast found grace in my sight it's talking like a safe person i know you by name because his name had been written in the book of life the lord said only those who have sinned against me i'll blot out their names out of the book of life which have written and the name of moses was in the book of life he knew it he said you told me you know me by name you also said i have found grace by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of god he had come to the lord he was a sinner too before you know what he did he even killed somebody and then he ran away into exile but then he knew that his sin will find him out and so he had confessed his sin to the lord he had depended upon the grace the pardoning grace of the lord he had been forgiven and now he knew that the assurance of forgiveness was right there and the lord called him by name the foundation of god standeth sure and let everyone that names the name of christ depart from iniquity this man had had that assurance and if you are born again you have that assurance too you've confessed your sins you've turned away from your sin you have believed on the lord jesus christ and the grace of god has made a change in your life and now you say you tell me that you know me by name and you tell me that your presence will go with me it says look at verse 13 now therefore i pray thee if i have found grace in thy sight if i have found grace in thy sight I thought you said Moses that already find the grace of God. Oh yes, oh yes. Because number one, there is the grace for sonship. Then there's the grace for servanthood, serving the Lord. You come into the kingdom of God by grace, and then you are brought into service by grace. And the grace for sonship, that's to live a clean life, a righteous life, that's to overcome temptation, that's to be able to overpower the enemy when it comes to tempt you to do evil. But the grace for service, the grace for service, that it calls you into service, and the grace for sonship, that's different. Now, this man, Moses, he needed the grace to be able to lead the children of Israel onto the land of promise. That's why he says, now, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, and that I may know 
the time he know thee, the time he know, the time he find grace in thy sight, and consider that this people, this nation, is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Give me a good amen. amen. The Lord said, Yes, Moses, I've heard you. You got grace for sonship. Now grace for service and grace to be sustaining grace to be able to endure until the very end that you want to come to that final rest. It says, my grace will go with you and I will give you rest. And the Lord is assuring you, my brother, my sister, servants of the living God, this year the grace of God will go with you. In the time of temptation, in the time of trial, in the time of confusion, in the time of depression, in a time of real trouble, even in the place where you are, you'll find the grace of God will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. And you have the privilege of having the presence of God going with you. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. When that presence comes to us, what's the advantage? What's the advantage? What's the profit? Look at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. I'm reading there from verse 2 and then verse 3. And the Lord was with Joseph. No father there. The Lord was with Joseph. No mother there. The Lord was with Joseph. His brothers hated him. The greater their hatred, the greater the grace of God. The greater the presence of God. The greater the power of God. As your days, so shall your strength be. And the greater the predicament that is often, the greater the grace and the presence of God was him. It was in a strange land. Like many of us, you go to places where that's not the place you were born, that's not your country. And now the challenges there, there are some real situations there. And the Lord, as he was with Joseph, he will be with you. He says, And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man, you will prosper. Amen. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw, his master saw, his master saw that the Lord was with him. People will see. People will hear. Some things are going to happen in your life that people will say, I saw that myself. I knew that myself. Something new is going to happen in your life in Jesus' name. And his master saw that uh, the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. All, all, all that you do, the Lord will make it to prosper. Uh, that, that's the advantage of, you know, the presence of God being with us. When the presence of God is with you. When the grace of God is multiplied in your life. When the power of God is unceasing in your life. It's just there all the time, all the time. Temptation is there, the grace is there. Trials are there, the grace is there. And the presence of God is there every time. People are going to see that this year is a different year for you. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, but the Lord was Joseph and showed him mercy. The Lord will show you mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You know, they told lies against him. And then the master did not even find out. Joseph, you are not like that. Tell me your whole side of the story. He was not asked at all. But when the master heard that this is what this your servant, this your slave, what he wanted to do with me, the master just got angry. Even when people are angry at you, the Lord will still be with you. When they slander you, when they lie against you, and then when they go to confine you somewhere, in that place of confinement, that will be your stepping stone to promotion in Jesus' name. And then we're told that when he got to the prison, we're told that even the keeper of the prison still should in favor because the Lord was with him. Look at verse 23. Verse 23, talking about this, uh, Joseph and the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his son because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Can you see your prosperity already? Yes. It's coming. Yes. Because the presence of the Lord will be with you. And that's the advantage, that's the profit, and that's the result, that's the reward of the presence of the Lord being with us. In 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 19. 1 Samuel 3 verse 19. The privilege of his promised presence. He has promised he's going to be with us and that he will stay with us and remain with us until the end of the age. 
until the end of the world, until the end of our time here on earth. He will never leave you, he will never forsake you. And here are the privileges or the advantages or the profit or the reason why the reward of that presence of the Lord with us. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 19, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And Samuel grew. As you are growing in the Lord, the Lord will be with you. And did and did not and did let none of his words fall to the ground. That is, the Lord protected the words of Samuel, preserved the words of Samuel. Anything Samuel said, the Lord just confirmed it. Why? Because the presence of the Lord was with Samuel.